Hi, I got um, uh, an understanding, a revelation that was pretty exciting to me and I want to share it with you. I want to start out by just asking Holy Spirit for your power, your anointing, that you will cause lives to be changed with this revelation, with this information of what you have given for us to use. So um, the first scripture that came to me was uh, Proverbs 28, verse 10 or 12, I'm having trouble, 12. When the wicked arise, a man hides himself. And um, with that background, think about Gideon. You probably know the story of Gideon, how he hid in the um, he hid in the press, the um, the the wine press thing, from the Midians because the Midianites were stealing everything. They were taking all the food. They were taking all the goodies from the land. And so Gideon was hiding himself. And when he was hiding there, the Lord sent an angel to him because he was asking a question. He said, how long is it going to be before we see the miracles that we've heard about? We've heard about all these miracles that have happened in the past, and, and we believe that those miracles have happened. But what about today? We need some miracles. And an angel comes and basically says to him, well, it's kind of up to you. You need to do something about it. You need to save Israel. You need to save the United States. You need to save your family. You need to save your neighborhood. And Gideon asks, how? And the first thing he does is he builds an altar. And he sacrifices on this altar, and the angel is, is uh, helping him with the sacrifice. And so after he sacrifices to the Lord to rebuild, reestablish the Lord's altar, then the direction is go and tear down the altar to Baal. Well, he did it during the night because that was a pretty scary thing to do but he did it and he got his um, helpers his workers and they or they all tore down the altar of Baal and also the Asherah pole that was beside it so the next day they were pretty angry at him and you know we know that you did this and went to his dad and his dad said, well, if Baal is so big and mighty, then let him protect himself. Why should we do anything about it? So starting out with that, um, the Lord has given me some understanding about altars and how um, the first thing that we need to do is to build our altars. Our uh, our own altars are uh, the the times that we spend in prayer and Bible study and worship uh, in our own home. So there's an altar on the heart of each one of us. And the sacrifice that we offer on that altar is our self, our self-will, our self, our self-ideas, our pride, our fear. We bring that to the altar and we let the fire of God, the love of God, consume it there. And then it gives us power because an altar is a place to receive power, supernatural power, and exchange is made at an altar. That a person brings something to the altar and gets something in exchange and releases power. So this is kind of the background of what the Lord was showing me that okay uh, when you think about okay your father's altars to Baal 
Our ancestors' altars may be to many things, but anyone will be identified by fear and or pride. How do we tear down these demonic altars? Example, I break and tear down the altar built around my family pride in being better than other families. I confess pride is sin and I ask forgiveness and cleansing and I pull down that altar and I ask that the angels would totally destroy it. Once we tend to our own altars and they, if they've been neglected, then it's time for the next step which would be tearing down demonic altars in our cities, our churches, our country. If you can identify the enemy eating your lunch, so to speak, as the Midians were eating all the goodies of the Israelites, then you have found an evil altar. An example would be our tax dollars going to other countries instead of feeding and providing for our own people. After I meditated on these things, I found myself watching a documentary about Nikola Tesla and his idea of sending electricity from towers with no wires. Asking the Lord, why did I watch that? What What's the significance of me watching that? Because I watched it right after I watched a video about understanding the altars by Francis Miles, which I highly recommend. He's got things on YouTube. I'll share with you what I believe came from the Lord. Just as Tesla envisioned electricity going from tower to tower, power going from tower to tower, so power travels from altar to altar. A web is created between the demonic altars. That web is powered primarily by fear, deception, and pride. The web created holds people captive, even as the Bible says Satan bl blinds the eyes of unbelievers. The activity on the altars, the sacrifice to demonic entities, such as the murder of innocent babies, releases evil power which travels on the web and tightens the grip on people's minds and hearts. Most people stumble in the darkness that the darkness that some people call the matrix, that web that's created in between the evil altars could be called a matrix. As we pull down the demonic altars, by our decrees, releasing mighty angels to do the heavy lifting. Prosperity, healing, and salvation are released. Land is open to God's people. Nations shake, and eyes are opened. The most powerful altar ever constructed, of course, was two pieces of wood forming a cross. On that altar, the Son of God, Lamb of God, sacrificed the Eternal One. He humbled himself to die on that altar. Whoever will worship at that altar will receive power to become a son of God. As we tear down demonic altars, the evil matrix crumbles, the light shines, and people are set free to see the living gospel. If you are motivated by this message, do as Gideon and begin to tear down the evil altars. Hide yourself in Psalm 91 and expect the angels to do great destruction at the decrees of God's people. And if you want to study more on the subject, I suggest going to YouTube and looking up Francis Miles' videos about the altars. So I hope this blesses you and I hope it gives you some more weaponry to use uh, in the battle that we're all in, which is one. God has given us everything we need to totally win. So kingdom arise, people of God arise. And even as Gideon was told, you've got what it takes. Deliver your people.